Let's go over some concepts now that are going to be used in testing these hypotheses. First of all, in order to reject or disprove the null hypothesis, we need to do so beyond a reasonable doubt. So this is very much like when we're trying to prove guilt in a court case. We'd like to assume that people are innocent unless proven guilty. And in the scientific method, we like to assume that the null hypothesis is true unless we have evidence to suggest that it's not true. So generally, we want to make sure that there's only a very small chance that we will reject the null hypothesis when in fact the null hypothesis is true. This is considered type 1 error. And we're going to denote the probability of committing a type 1 error with the Greek letter alpha. This is also called the significance level. Significance. So we want, so just like in a court case, we want to be very sure. So, sorry, let's go back and read this again. So we want a very small chance of rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it is true. So in other words, if the prevailing assumption is that the null hypothesis is true, we don't want to falsely reject that null hypothesis. So we aren't going to be satisfied if there's just a little bit of evidence to suggest that the null hypothesis is false. We want to have an overwhelming amount of evidence that the null hypothesis is false before we reject it. In which case, we want to have just a very, very small chance of falsely rejecting the null hypothesis. In the court case analogy, we want a very, very small chance of sending an innocent person to jail. On the other hand, type 2 error, and we're going to denote that with a beta, Greek letter for B, is when you fail to reject the null hypothesis when, in fact, the null is not true. So in this case, a type 2 error occurs if, for example, in reality, the null hypothesis is not true, but we don't find enough evidence in our sample statistics to reject the null hypothesis. So in the court case analogy, this is like saying uh, a type 2 error would occur if a guilty person is not convicted by the court. In reality, we would like to be able to convict a guilty person, but there's always some chance that we don't find enough evidence to convict that person. Now, just like in society, in statistics, we are more OK with committing this type 2 error than we are with committing this type 1 error. We are much, less, we are much more concerned with the possibility that we might send an innocent person to jail than we are with the possibility of convicting an innocent person. Uh, sorry, that was the same thing. We are much more concerned with the possibility of sending an innocent person to jail, that's this case, a type 1 error, than we are with setting a guilty person free. That's an error as well. That's this type 2 error. We are OK with this chance over here being bigger and this chance over here being smaller. So now, how do we go ahead and test our, our, our null hypotheses? We need to test our sample statistics against the assumptions of the null hypothesis. And we're going to use the sampling error to construct confidence intervals around the assumed population mean. This is around the mean that's assumed in the null hypothesis. And we test to see if the sample mean that we collected is outside the confidence interval that we create around the hypothesized mean. The desired probability of type 1 error alpha, the, sig the significance level, is used to set our confidence. So for example, uh, we are going to set up front what we want alpha to be. Typically, alpha is 1% or 5%. And if we set alpha to 1% or 5%, the confidence level in our conclusion is going to be at the level of 1 minus alpha percent. 
So if alpha is 1%, we only want a 1% chance of making a type 1 error, then we are going to use a 99% confidence interval around this assumed population mean when we do our test. So step two is to select the appropriate statistical test. We are going to have more tests to decide between later on. But for now, since this is the first hypothesis test that we're using, the test that we are going to be using is called a one sample difference of means test. And this is a test in which a single sample mean is compared to a population mean. And look at how this test is formed. The test is either going to be a z-score or a t-score. And that, of course, is going to depend on whether or not our sample size is less than or greater than 30. And look at the equation for how we generate the z or the t. All we are going to do is take our sample mean, x bar, and we're going to standardize it in the normal way by subtracting mu. And this is the mu from the sampling distribution. centered, and I'm going to say mu h. That's the null hypothesis mean. So we're going to see how far away is x bar from the hypothesized mean. And we're going to divide that by the standard error of the mean. And remember that this is just the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So all we are doing in constructing this test statistic, the z or the t, is taking a standard, is taking the, the sample mean and standardizing it into the normal curve or into the t curve. Step three is to select the level of statistical significance. Remember, alpha is the significance level, and that's the likelihood of making a type 1 error. Common values of alpha are 10%, 5%, and 1%. But different tests and disciplines require different levels of confidence. Typically, in this course, we'll be dealing with these three levels. Based on those three levels of significance, we can come up with what the confidence level is. We're often going to be asked to provide a solution at a certain level of confidence, and in which case we're going to use 1 minus alpha in order to figure out which level of significance we should use for each level of confidence. Now, recall that beta is the likelihood of making a type 2 error. And a type 2 error occurs when we fail to reject the null hypothesis, when in fact we should reject the null hypothesis. It's not possible to control for both of these errors, errors simultaneously. So typically what we like to do is control for type 1 error by making alpha small. 